49ers Cal High Sports is presented by U.S. Bank. Life keeps moving. We're here for every step. U.S. Bank member, FDIC. Next on 49ers Cal High Sports presented by U.S. Bank. Huge league games are back in the spotlight. We'll see De La Salle take on Foothill. Berean Christian meets Alhambra and Leland battles Christopher. We'll see exciting softball action with San Ramon Valley and Livermore. Lacrosse featuring Sacred Heart Prep and St. Ignatius. And the story of how this St. Francis lacrosse player is back on the field after brain surgery. It's all next on 49ers Cal High Sports presented by U.S. Bank. Welcome to 49ers Cal High Sports presented by U.S. Bank. I'm Robert Bronstein. And I'm Aubrey Tolliver. We start with the battle at the top of the West Catholic League. The Serra Padres come into the week with a 13-2 season record, 4-0 in West Catholic League play. Ian Armstrong is a big bat for the Padres, leading the team with 21 RBI and four home runs on the year. Yeah, he's a good one. The Padres playing Valley Christian in a home-and-home -home series this week. The Warriors are the defending WCAL champs. Brock Kettleson is a big reason why. He's a fantastic outfielder for Valley, the Padres, and Warriors. Game one played at Valley Christian on Tuesday. Jake Vanderbrook in San Jose for a huge WCAL showdown between Valley Christian and Sarah. Padres strike first, top one. Ian Armstrong skies this ball out the right, one hop to the fence, and Armstrong slides head first for an RBI triple as Ian Josephson scores 1-0 Sarah. Great defense here from the Padres in the bottom half. Hard shot to short, and Michael Perrazzo steps on second and fires at the first for the 6-3 double play. But the Warriors even up the score in the third. This is Nathan Choi lifting this ball out the left, and it's fair. Hunter Fujimoto scores, all tied at one. Top four, Sarah looks to answer back. Here's a high fly ball out to left, but Hunter Fujimoto makes a wonderful catch out and left to retire the side. Oh, what a play to the bottom half. Runner on second for Brock Kettleson, who finds a hole up the middle for a knock. The throw comes in, and Quentin Marsh decides to go home. Here's the play at the plate, and Q is safe. 2-1 Warriors. More Valley Christian in the fourth. Rocco Muccilli drives this ball out the center for an RBI single. Kettleson scores. Warriors tack on another run to make it 4-1 after four innings. And that was enough run support for Quentin Marsh. Q did his thing on the bump, tossing a complete game, allowing just one run on four hits with three strikeouts. Valley Christian and Sarah, its first league loss of the season, 4-1 was the final. Diablo Foothill League play has Campolindo hosting College Park Tuesday afternoon. Connor Berkowitz leading off for the Falcons, hits a shallow pop-up to center field, and it falls in no man's land. He would later score on a fielder's choice to make it 1-0 Park. In the third inning, James Voorhees with a runner on third hits a high pop-up down the right field line. Jack Luster makes the catch, and Berkowitz, the runner at third, decides to make a move. The throw at the plate is strong, but not in time, and Burko scores to make it 2-0 College Park. Samuel Johnson keeps the line moving. A seeing eye ground ball up the middle scores Tino Vassell. 3 0 Falcons with two out in the third. And this is how the inning ends. Andy Moon scoops it up and delivers a strong throw to first to end the inning. Nathan LaFell with a strong performance on the bump, getting one of his six strikeouts to end the fifth inning. Campa looking to climb out of a 3 0 hole. Blake Robeson legs out an infield single for his second hit of the game. Good play from Vassell, the shortstop. The College Park infield just making plays. Riley Meadows grabs a tough hop, throws to Reese Mahay to Johnston. Great 5-4-3 double play. And Park grabs two more runs in the top of the seventh. Two on for Voorhees. It's a deep fly ball to center field, and the ball falls, scoring Berkowitz and Vassell. 5-0 the final in Moraga. LaFell throwing a complete game shutout, allowing just five hits and striking out six. Tyler Flipson checking in here with the 14-1 overall Hillsdale Knights hosting the Cappuccino Mustangs in Peninsula Bay Division battle. Into the second inning, Mustangs laid on a bump, but Alexis Kuka's there for the out at first. Leona Mack fires a Claire Shelton, wearing a pickle, but it's a Shelton sister showdown with Sophia Shelton chasing down the base runner for the double play. Bottom third now, Mustangs Lola Sierra was red hot from the circle with one of her five Ks on the day to close out the third, keeping it scoreless. Jumping ahead to the fifth, Cappuccino trying to get the bats going, but there's no getting past Claire Shelton recording all three outs in the fifth. 
The Knights look to get on the board with a hard hit to shortstop, but Mustangs Liz Doze there with the miraculous diving catch. What a play, we have got a stalemate here. But here comes Hillsdale. Sophia Shelton with the grounded to third and the throw to second gets away. That allows Mack to find a way home to strike first for the Knights. Hillsdale leads 1-0 in the fifth. Top the seventh now. The Knights looking to close this thing out. Kuka rifling in the second out of the inning. One of her five strikeouts on the day. Last chance for Cappuccino. A hard hit grounded to second, but Mack is there for the final out and that will do it. Kuka's fired up about it after allowing only one hit on the day. The Knights take down Cappuccino in a tight one, improving to 5-1 in the Peninsula Bay Division, tied with Carlmont for first place. Nikon introduced in Danville as San Ramon Valley hosts De La Salle. Tied out one early, Kellen Dunn to Jonathan Truman. Truman finds the back of the net. It's 2-1 Spartans. De La Salle tacks on another before Dunn brings this from behind the net and gives some sidearm action for the goal, and it's 8-1 De La Salle after one. The Wolves with some second quarter scoring. Ellie Volk strikes from far out, and it's 8-2 De La Salle. Here's the senior, Henry Benner, scoring one of his six on the night with this forehand shot and goal, 10-2 Spartans. Jude Beacon getting involved. Jude brings the ball up and slings it into the back of the net for the Spartans' goal. De La Salle is rolling. Beacon looking to put in another, but it's deflected off the goalie to Dunn, and the sophomore catches it and scores one of his five on the night. De La Salle with eight goal scorers in an 18-5 victory on the road. The Rikus Center brings us the Gary Rikus Players of the Week every week. The award based on performances in the previous week's games. The announcement performed in a wrap by our good friends at the Rikus Center. Here are this week's Gary Rikus Players of the Week. Yeah. In the dark hoes, a bright light that'll spark those. Dark chokes from the sight of Marcos. Lagios got the glow shine through facts. Who's whack and who's gotta go? Gotta go. Undefeated in the league, deemed whack. whack. Three for three, eating each snack at back. Yeah. The lead off, hit a hit a home run and scored dose. Yeah. Marcos breaking hearts, no remorse though. Wow, wow. Uh, Heartbreakers make a forfeit. Yeah. Safe to say, you ain't saving your fortress from the wildcat. Right. Ain't for nor quiz, pitching more twists and turns to turn any forces right around. Right around. With ease on the mound, no freshman 15 when it's 15 strikeouts. Woo. What's it mean? But six out came from Ava, that's 21 mixed down. A gay guy, 49ers count high. Gary Wright is players of the week. Trigger D beats Jeff and Mace. D-Line Constructors is a Bay Area leader in demolition, grading, paving, and site utilities. D-Line Constructors digs in with a passion and brings us the D-Line Defensive Play of the Week. This week's D-Line Constructors Defensive Play goes to Alameda's Ava Pardo. Ava with a spectacular catch in the outfield in the Hornets win last week. Ava Pardo has this week's D-Line Constructors Defensive Play. The San Francisco Giants present the Baseball Coach of the Week every week. Our Giants Coach of the Week this week is Connor Hornsby from Akalanes. The Dons breaking a program record going 14-0 to start the season. Congratulations to Coach Hornsby, this week's San Francisco Giants Coach of the Week. You can now become a member of our brand new YouTube membership. It's a great way to support our show and get exclusive full game videos every week from all of the games we shoot. Scan this QR code or click the link in our Instagram bio to join. Coming up, the Chick-fil-A sportsmanship game as Prospect takes on Piedmont Hills. And a big game in the East Bay League softball as San Ramon Valley visits Livermore when 49ers Cal High Sports presented by U.S. Bank continues. On Saturday, April 20th, the first 15,000 fans pick up a Patrick Bailey bobblehead presented by Chevron. Get tickets now at sfgiants.com. How's the chicken? Oh, the prawns are delicious. Oh, I have a shellfish allergy. One prawn, very good. Did I say chicken wrong? Tired of people not listening to what you want? It's truffle season. Ah, that's okay. Never I... enough truffles. How much are they? It's a lot. Oh, okay. I'm good. Uh, that. It's like a priceless piece of art. Enjoy. Or when they sell you what they want. Yeah. yeah. The more we understand you, the better we can help you. That's what U.S. Bank is for. Huge relief. Yeah. Young Tommy was born a champion, and always up for a challenge. 
He pursued the patience, persistence, and problem-solving skills he still uses today at Service Champions. We're now offering a $58 two-for-one special, a comprehensive AC tune-up, and a free furnace safety inspection. High five service, champion attitude. Your comfort is a puzzle that Service Champions will solve. Call 800-5-CHAMPS. Home runs become slam dunks on Sunday, April 21st, as the Logan Webb basketball jersey presented by Super Duper Burgers will be passed to the first 15,000 fans. Get tickets now at sfgiants.com. 49ers Cal High Sports is brought to you by these fine companies who care about high school sports. By Service Champions. High five service, champion attitude. Service Champions. By Chick-fil-A. Eat more chicken. By Mary West Credit Union, working for you today, tomorrow, together. And by Stevens Creek Chevrolet, find new roads. The Piedmont Hills Pirates are having a great season and are threatening to run away with the Santa Teresa division with a 7-0 league record. This is a young, talented team with six of its top seven hitters underclassmen. The Pirates have a two-game lead over three teams, including Prospect. The Panthers looking to put the Pirates back in the pack in a two-game series this week. Game one is our Chick-fil-A sportsmanship game. That means everyone gets free chicken sandwiches after the game. Our Adrian Soriano was there. With about four weeks left in the regular season, the Prospect Panthers are looking to gain ground in the race for the Santa Teresa division title. Senior Matt Castillo is leading the Panthers with a 375 batting average and 12 RBIs. But Prospect will have to deal with sophomore Jake Paskert. Jake has a 356 batting average with 14 RBIs. On the mound, Jake has a 2.59 ERA and 27 strikeouts. Can Prospect gain ground on the Pirates or will Pete Mon Hills move one step closer towards the Santa Teresa division title. Let's find out in our Chick-fil-A sportsmanship game. Prospect on the board first as KJ Reed and crushes one day to center field all the way to the warning track as Matt Castillo comes in to score one nothing Panthers. But Piedmont Hills answers right back. Toby Torres shoots it to left for a base hit. Jake Pasker comes in to score and it's all tied up at one. Josh Gomez up next and Josh grounds one to second. The ball finds the outfield grass as Brian Wang races in to score and it's 2-1 Piedmont Hills Pirates. Then Gabe Badillo goes the other way for another Pirates base hit. Josh Gomez is in. Right behind them is Diego Martinez. And it's 4-1 Piedmont Hills Pirates after one. Prospect gets one back in the second. Henry Little pokes it to right field for a single. Ethan Rod comes in to score. And it's 4-2 Piedmont Hills after two. Bottom three now and Gabe Badillo grounds one to short. Prospect gets the out at second. But the throw to first is off and that allows Josh Gomez to come home as the Pirates take a 5-2 lead after three. Jake Paskert pitched well for the Piedmont Hills Pirates. Jake getting one of his five strikeouts on the day while only allowing two runs in four innings of work. To the bottom half now and the pickup throw to first gets away and that allows Alex Strand to come home and it's 6-2 Piedmont Hills Pirates after four. Top five now and Kyle Paulus blasts one day to left field. All the way to the fence as Jack Austin comes home. Right behind them is KJ Reedon. And the Prospect Panthers cut the deficit to within one. Prospect looking to continue the rally in the seventh. But Toby Torres shuts it down as Toby induces the fly ball to left. Brian Wang makes the catch as the Pirates tied the school record for most consecutive wins in a season. And improved to 8-0 in the Santa Teresa division. Gabe Badillo talks about being a part of school history. It's really big in my opinion. I feel like... Uh... You know, this team is really special. These guys are some guys every day I come out play with, and there's like not a time where I don't enjoy it, and I really love everyone on this team. In San Jose with the Chick-fil-A sportsmanship game, I'm Adrian Soriano, 49ers Cal High Sports. The San Ramon Valley Wolves getting ready to go in this East Bay League battle with Livermore. Great defense for Livermore. Early a shot to second is gobbled up by Gianna Wills, who gets the out at first. 
Top two, a runner on for Addie Leos, who slaps it into shallow left. Sophia Jin scores 1-0 Wolves. Runner at second for Livermore in the third. Maggie Pike sends it back to the pitcher. The throw goes to third. Annie Pulaski is safe, and we have runners at the corners. Later in the third, Jake Cosgriff with a tough chopper to short. The ball gets through. Scoring is a very happy Pulaski. It's one all. To the fourth, here's Pulaski again. A solid single to left. Scoring is Lane McCoskey and Kimberly Dow. It's 3-1 Livermore. Five runs in the fourth for Livermore. The ball is sent to third, and when the throw gets away, Kerrigan Coates scores 4-1 Cowboys. Here's the University of Minnesota bound Cosgriff doing a job. The chopper to the right side allows Garachi to race around and score, and it's 6-1 Livermore Cowboys. San Ramon Valley gets two back in the sixth as Isla Higgins with a blast to center. It drops. Jin scores, and here comes Brianna Shapiro, and it is 6-3 now. Pulaski had a huge game for the Cowboys with this double part of a three for three game for the senior third baseman, and she was all sorts of thrilled about that one. Huge play here, bases loaded as Pulaski dives and robs the hitter of extra bases, then throws home for the force. A great play there as Livermore hangs on for the 6 3 victory, the Cowboys all alone in first place. The undefeated Sacred Heart Prep Gators take on the St. Ignatius Wildcats in a WCAL rematch. Gators with an early lead. Then Maggie Goldstein finds Cat Dykes, who has a shot and Cat strikes. It's 2 0 Gators. SI tie on free position goals, then take the lead. Chloe Del Negro connects with Sophie Gosh, and oh my gosh, Wildcats lead 3 2 after one. The Wildcats tack on one, then Gosh finds the back of the net again, and the Wildcats are up 5-2, but the sophomore isn't done. Sophie strikes again, but the Gators score to end the half. It's 6-4 SI at the break. The fourth quarter, it's 7-6 SI. Millie Bartlett takes the defender's ankles, and Ellery Collins scores. It's 8-6 Wildcats with five minutes left. The Gators on the hunt. Goldstein to Lily Seltzer, and suddenly it's a one-goal game. Final two minutes, and the Gators get an opportunity and cash it in on an Olivia Abal goal, and we are going to overtime. First OT is scoreless, then on this free position shot, Millie Barlett wins the matchup and the game. Redemption for the Wildcats, who move into a tie with SHP for first place in league. 8-9 to nine the final, Gosh, scoring three. Service Champions Heating and Air Conditioning helps us honor students who perform well on the field while doing great work around campus. This week's Service Champions Student Spotlight is Haley Nelson from Las Lomas High School. Haley is involved in leadership on the Knights campus serving as an officer. Haley puts together fun school activities for students on campus and she was just elected as the school's ASB president for next year. Haley Nelson is this week's Service Champions Student Spotlight. Very nice. Delta Dental presents Smiles for Scholars. Each week we honor the team that has athletes that are all doing very well in the classroom. This week we honor the Miramonte softball team. The Matadors having a great season on the field and in the classroom with a team average of a 3.6 GPA. Coming up, Santa Teresa battles Lee in the very tight Mount Hamilton division. But first, here is our U.S. Bank Top 10 softball poll. Ever wonder where the capital A in Chick-fil-A came from? It started with grade A top quality chicken. But we believed everything, not just the food, should be grade A. A is for above and beyond. An extra level of care. A game. From caring for our guests in our community to cleanliness and safe service with a my pleasure. A is for all the little things we do to bring you our best every day. A little funky dance. And that too. From the beginning, Meriwest Credit Union was created to provide a brighter financial future for you. We work hard for our members because they're our greatest strength. Meriwest worked for me when I needed an auto loan for my first car. When I need to make a mobile payment, Meriwest works for me. Meriwest works for me wherever adventure takes us. Meriwest Credit Union, let us work for you today, tomorrow, together. Touchdown 49ers! In my pursuit to greatness, I discovered the secret. Dedication to my team and my relentless drive to win. I chose to be in the presence of greatness. Bernardi Zarata, 
the official injury attorneys of the San Francisco 49ers share the same dedication, the same drive, the same spirit of champion. When justice is your goal, choose the dedicated team of Bernardi Zarata, your faithful injury attorneys. At Service Champions, we're now offering a $58 two-for-one special. A comprehensive AC tune-up and a free furnace safety inspection. High five service, champion attitude. Call 805-CHAMPS. We are Newburgh Memorial. And you're watching 49ers Sky High Sports. Presented by U.S. Bank. Yeah! We are back at the NBC Sports Studio with action from the Mount Hamilton Division, where, yes, we have a log jam. Five teams are within one game of first place Lee. The Longhorns at six and two trying to hold off the rest of the field. Santa Teresa is two games behind the Longhorns. The Saints with a two game set against the league leaders this week and a chance to make the race even closer. Game one played at Lee on Thursday. Tyler Flipson here with the Lee Longhorns dropping it like it's hot on a hot Thursday afternoon hosting the Santa Teresa Saints. Longhorns hot on defense in the first. Marcus Glanville celebrating his birthday with one of his five strikeouts on the day. Bottom of the first and Lee gets the bats going. Michael Moganum lays down a perfect button. The throw gets away allowing Brandon Kim to advance to third and Moganum giving us a little dancey dance on second. Same inning, Ollie Obenauer drives it in the center to the fence for a double knocking in both Moganum and Kim. It's 2-0 Lee into the second. And this Longhorn defense is legit. Lance Takamura rifles it to first for the pickoff and is fired up about it, rightfully so. Two Lee runs later in the third. Jacob Madonna hits it perfectly down the third baseline for a base hit, bringing Dylan Christian and Jacob Zarni home. It's 6-0 Lee. The Saints get the bats going though. Marco Pacheco lays down a bunt and the throw is wild. That gets Diego Flores across home to make it 6-1 Lee. Top five runners on. Jacob Gilbreth line drives this into left for a base hit, bringing David Hall home, but Longhorn Zarni finds his cutoff man Christian, and then to Takamura home, and the second runner is out! It's 6-2 Longhorns. One ST run later, top seven. Saints looking to bring it back, but Obenauer lasers in strike three, and that will do it. Lee stays on top in the Mount Hamilton division, improving to 7-2 in the league. A big Mission Valley League showdown in Union City as James Logan battles Washington and the Colts got off to a hot start. Bottom one runners on for Travian Martinez who drives this ball out the right center field. Two run score and Martinez is loving that double. Couple batters later, Christian Padilla hits a shot out the short. It's fielded cleanly but no throw. An infield single for Christian as Martinez scores three zip Colts. James Logan up 4 nothing, looking for more. Here's Evan Yao smacking this ball out the left for a knock, but Joseph Guerra has got a cannon. Here comes the throw. The runner is out at the plate. What a play. Strong outing for Wesley Vega. Six strong innings for Wesley, allowing just three hits with three strikeouts, which includes this K. Huge inning for the Colts in the fifth. Padilla cranks this ball out the left, and this ball is going to the fence. Yash Gupta scores from second. 5-0 Colts. James Logan would tack on six more runs in the fifth. Two of those runs coming from this base hit by Martinez. 11-0 Colts. James Logan tacks on another run in the sixth as the Colts roll past the Huskies winning 12 to nothing. Chick-fil-A brings us stories of athletes who inspire us. Jake Vanderbrook joins us now with the story of the St. Francis lacrosse player coming back after a serious surgery. Robert Aubrey Lauren Adair went through one of the scariest moments of her life. You would never think she would ever make her way back to lacrosse, but she overcame a huge obstacle, putting mind over matter. It's a bright sunny afternoon for lacrosse practice at St. Francis High School. Freshman Lauren Adair is excelling on the field while playing the game she loves most. I really like how competitive it is. I like like scoring goals because I play attack and that's just, I've always been competitive. You would never believe what this hardworking athlete went through within the past year. A bad headache turned into a serious life-threatening matter. I was just on spring break with my family and we were in Palm Springs. We were just having a good time and I like, Right when we got to Palm Springs, I started feeling off. And then all of a sudden, um, she started having headaches for a couple days straight. Um, then the next day, she started throwing up. We thought maybe she had the flu. 
Um, and then she, at one point um, the next day, she starts slurring her words a little bit. And we knew at that point something was wrong. After Lauren got a CT scan, doctors revealed she had a brain bleed. Lauren was diagnosed with an arteriovenous malformation known as AVM. If I had a brain bleed, it could be a lot worse that I got lucky with the size of it. It was just, I was just devastated because I wanted to play lacrosse. The problem with having an AVM in your brain is they can bleed or hemorrhage into the brain and that causes a stroke and cause major problems from major neurological deficits or even in some cases death. At first, Lauren was told she didn't need surgery. Doctors believed radiation would shrink the AVM, but not eliminate it. After experiencing another week of the same symptoms, Lauren was sent to Stanford Children's Hospital for brain surgery. And they told me, oh, I think brain surgery would be easier, or not easier, but a better solution to getting a cure. And I was like, oh, I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I was like, okay, I want a cure. The estimated risk of bleeding for an AVM is between three and 4% per year. And so for a young person like Lauren, you can see that the cumulative risk quickly adds up. After a 12 hour operation, the surgery was a success. Dr. Marr and his staff managed to remove Lauren's AVM. She just handled this whole situation like a champ. And I just couldn't believe how, how brave she was. After a few months of recovery, Lauren grabbed her stick and was back playing lacrosse with her friends and teammates. The first time I went out and played again, I was so scared. I put on a bike helmet. I actually whacked myself in the head when I was doing it. So that was really scary, but I still wanted to go because I wanted to get better and I wanted to make the team. And she did exactly that. The freshman attacker continues to be a prolific score for the Lancers JV squad, but the biggest goal was scoring her first goal since brain surgery. A heartwarming moment for this resilient young athlete. It, when I scored the goal, it felt really good and I just like ran off the field. I was kind of shocked though at the time and I was like, wow, I can do this. For the first time since her brain surgery, Lauren reunited with Dr. Marr, the man who fixed her brain. A special moment for patient and doctor, both proud on what they accomplished. Uh, she had a very uh, significant uh, medical problem and she, she really tackled that problem head on and, uh, and took back control of her life because she's made a, an incredible recovery. I think as, as good as any we could have anticipated. Lauren Adair has made a remarkable comeback. This determined athlete overcame this obstacle and continues to strive for success. It's been exactly one year since her brain surgery. It's just an unbelievable story to begin with. Now, Lauren's back playing the game she loves with her friends and teammates. Fantastic. One year after brain surgery, that's crazy. Merrill West Credit Union brings us the Merrill West Merit Award honoring Bay Area teachers. Here's Ben Tower from James Logan talking about his favorite teacher, Steve K. I would say my favorite teacher at Logan is uh, Mr. K. He's the auto tech teacher and he just, he, he knows how to translate it to the students. He's just a great teacher overall. Coming up to the El Camino League we go for the first place game with Milpitas and Santa Clara. And the best in boys volleyball as St. Francis puts its undefeated league record on the line against second place Valley Christian as 49ers Cal High Sports presented by U.S. Bank continues. <laughs> <laughs> At Service Champions, we're now offering a $58 two-for-one special, a comprehensive AC tune-up, and a free furnace safety inspection. High five service, champion attitude. Call 805-CHAMPS. One, two, three. Get ready to cheer for your next new or used car at Stevens Creek Chevrolet. Stevens Creek Chevrolet! We're ready to make your buying experience safe and easy. Come to our dealership to see and test drive one of hundreds of great Chevrolet cars and trucks. Or you can go online to shop, order and have your new car delivered right to your door. So get fired up for a great deal right here at... I'm Nancy Lambert, the director of the Schwab Learning Center at CHC. In a world where every second counts, education doesn't have to be a struggle. 
At the Schwab Learning Center, our learning specialists work one-on-one -on -one with high school and college students with ADHD, dyslexia, and other learning differences. We work with you to understand your learning and attention strengths and challenges. We help you develop strategies that optimize the way you learn. Discover the power of personalized learning that empowers students to excel. Your success is our mission. Party time! <laughs> Niners Cal High Sports is brought to you by these fine companies who care about high school sports. By Lexus of Stevens Creek, taking care of our guests one at a time. By DGDG.com where we want you to be a happy car buyer. By Schwab Learning Center, your success is our mission. By the Rikus Center, got goals? And by Sharks Ice, official practice facility of the San Jose Sharks and home of the San Jose Barracuda. The Milpitas Trojans are undefeated in the El Camino division to start the week with the hitting and pitching of Nathan Pagba leading the Trojans. Just one game behind Milpitas to start this game is Santa Clara. The Bruins, Jacob Horn hitting 415. Santa Clara needing a win to move into first place. A first place tie in the game played at Santa Clara on Tuesday. Adrian Soriano here in Santa Clara as the Bruins take on Milpitas. The Trojans on the board first in the first as the pitch gets away. Nico Marin races in to score. 1-0 Milpitas after one. The Trojans looking for more in the second, but Zach Gallegos fires to Matthew Conley to get the runner at the plate. Then in the bottom half, the pitch gets away. That allows Connor Hill to come in and score, and the game is tied at one after two. Bottom three now and Connor Hill skies one to left field. Roro Olivo makes the catch, but here comes Zach Gallegos and Zach is safe at the plate as the Bruins take a 2-1 lead after three. Milpitas answers back in the fourth as the pitch gets away again. And once again, Nico Morin comes in to score as the Trojans tie the game at two after four. Top five now and Nico Morin laces one over the shortstop for a base hit. Caleb Milan scores. Right behind him is Josh Vermesius for two Milpitas. Santa Clara trying to rally back in the bottom half, but Marin makes a terrific running catch in the outfield to keep the Trojan lead intact after five. Both teams trade runs in the sixth to make it 5-3. Then in the seventh, Olivo crushes one deep to right field, all the way to the fence for a double as Adrian Chavez scores 6-3 Trojans. Bases loaded in the bottom half now and Drew Diffendurfer sends one to shallow left. That falls in as Andrew Traffis scores 6-4 Milpitas. Still bases loaded and Nathan Pagba gets the strikeout to end it as Milpitas hangs on to win it 6-4 over Santa Clara to go to 8-0 in the Santa Clara Valley El Camino Division. Let's go to the hardwood for some volleyball as Valley Christian battles St. Francis. First set, Warriors looking strong early as Andy Shu sets up Greg Lee with this monster kill. Lancers respond as Daniel Devine receives a back set and Daniel's looking fine. 11 kills for the Pepperdine commit. You know who's also going the Pepperdine? Tyler Alden here, the senior, delivers with this cross-court kill. Warriors take set one, 25-18. Valley Christian continues to pour it on in set two. Lee bumps it over the Elon Taylor and here comes the boom. 11 kills for the junior. St. Francis looking the answer, but Taylor and Andrew Salisbury work together to come away with this block. Warriors win set two, 25-14. To the third set, how about Timothy Cho pulling off some trickery? Now that's a thing of beauty, but the Warriors took control of this match. Here's Tyler Alden climbing the ladder and Tyler gives his baby a rip. Valley Christian hands St. Francis its first league loss of the season, taking this match three sets to none. Lexus of Stevens Creek brings us the Volunteer Award, leading to $10,000 in scholarships to be handed out by Lexus of Stevens Creek at our end of the season awards banquet. The voting is on and thousands of votes are already counted. You can now scan this QR code or go to the link in our bio on social media to vote for your favorite volunteer. Polls close on April 22nd. Gallo Salami helps us spotlight top athletes who are among the top recruits in the nation. This week's Gallo Salami Big Salami is MIDI softball star Lindsay Miller. Lindsay committed to play next season at the University of Kentucky. Wow, coming up, East Bay League Baseball with De La Salle and Foothill. And the first place game in the Diablo Valley League as Berean Christian travels to Alhambra. But first, here is this week's learning tip from the Schwab Learning Center. Here's a good tool to help a student with dyslexia or ADHD. 
One good strategy is breaking up information and tasks into smaller chunks. Divide study sessions into smaller, more focused segments working on one topic at a time. Set realistic goals for what you want to accomplish in each segment. Work with a Schwab Learning Center specialist to practice these skills and optimize your performance in school. East Bay League Baseball now with teams from different divisions battling it out. Both De La Salle and Foothill with three and two league records. The Spartans' Joe McGee leading the team with a 447 batting average. Foothill is led by junior Landon Comerford's 476 average. The two teams meeting at Foothill Wednesday afternoon. The De La Salle Spartans hit the field and the Spartans brought their hitting shoes. One nothing in the fourth and then the floodgates open. It starts with this Alec Blair blast to the wall and left a double for the baseball and basketball star. Two on for Jamie Mullins, the grandson of Rick Steen, the former DLS and San Ramon Valley coach. It's three nothing. Two on for Sean Stafford, who sends it deep to right off the wall. Ethan Sullivan scores, but Foothill goes Braden Brown to Landon Comerford to Hudson Flora to get the runner at the plate. Still in the fourth, Joe McGee rips it up the middle. Stafford scores. It's 6-0 De La Salle. Here's Alec Blair with his second at-bat of the inning. Alec with a can of corn to left, scoring is Brandon Vargas. It's 7-0 De La Salle. Here's Hank Tripaldi again, and this time hammering Hank sends it down the left field line. It's a ground rule double, 9-0 De La Salle. Here's Sullivan again with a chopper this time down the left field line. Blair and Tripaldi score. It's 11-0, all part of an 11-run fourth inning. It was out of hand from there as the runs keep coming. Tyler Spangler, one of 18 Spartans with at least one hit. Here's Tripaldi with his third hit of the game. Scoring is McGee. Then the big blast in the seventh. It's a grand slam for Carlo Garcia over the right field fence as De La Salle scores 28 runs on 27 hits. Tripaldi and Sullivan with big days at the plate. Brian Christian and Alhambra in game two of the home and home series Thursday afternoon. The Bulldogs taking game one and they are threatening early in this one. Cameron Millar with a runner on second slaps a liner to the opposite field. Daniel Polisek holds up at third to put runners on the corners for Jaden Lack and Jaden comes up clutch with a base knock to center field. In comes Polisek. Alhambra with the early one run lead. And they're looking for more in the inning. Josh Werner at shortstop charges on the soft grounder and guns down the runner at first. Great play from Werner to hold the Bulldogs to one run. Alhambra starter Cameron Millar settles in early, striking out three through two innings. And the Berean Christian defense making plays. Ryder Walker, the freshman, making a big play in the hot corner. And the Eagles starting pitcher Luke Upshaw giving up just that one run in his four innings of work. The Eagles need to get their bats going. Runner on first in the top of the fourth for Iver Vertolfo, and Iver slaps the ball through the right side of the infield. But no Eagles would score in the inning as Millar stays hot on the mound. This is one of his six strikeouts. He goes the distance on the mound, throwing a complete game shutout. Kiki Henriquez makes a great play at third to put the game in the books. Alhambra completes the sweep of Berean Christian, remaining in first place in the Diablo Foothill League. The Harker School helps us honor scholar athletes each week. This week's Harker Scholar Athlete is Lola Whalen, the Ensenal softball star with a very impressive 3.9 GPA. Brought to you by the Harker School. Late last month, Harker second graders performed at the annual Ogre Awards. This long running Harker tradition features students appearing in colorful costumes for a mock award show in which they pay tribute to their favorite literary characters. At Harker, transitional kindergarten through 12th grade students discover their passions. Learn more at harker.org. Albany's Construction brings us the dirty work play each week. This is the play showing the same kind of grit and determination exemplified by all of the good folks at Albany's Construction. This week's dirty work play goes to Teo Thompson from Albany. Teo with an amazing diving catch in the Cougars game last week. Teo, Teo, Teo Thompson doing the dirty work just like our good friends at Albany's Construction. There's so much great content on our social media. Check us out all week long on all of the platforms, but especially on Instagram where Gabriel Yanez and Jonah Alpati started following us this week. Our handle is 49ers Cal High. Coming up, two of the Bay Area's very best. It's Mitty and St. Francis Softball in our Crumble Cookies Game of the Week. And Willow Glen battles Gilroy in the Mount Hamilton Division as 49ers Cal High Sports presented by U.S. Bank rolls along. This tiny payment thing is a giant pain. Hi, ladies. Alex from US Bank. 
Can she help? How about a comprehensive point of sale system? That can track inventory, manage schedules, and customize orders? That's what US Bank Business Essentials is for. What about a new oven? Can US Bank help us there? We can serve loans in as fast as 12 minutes. That would be a big help. Huge. Jumbo. Ginormous. Woo! Woo! Finding ways to make your business boom. That's what US Bank is for. We'll get there together. Join us on the ice for the Bay Area's hottest sport. High school ice hockey leagues are forming now for the upcoming season. Be part of this fast-moving, hard-hitting, crazy, exciting game. You can join as part of your high school team or sign up to be assigned to a team. Games are played at Sharks Ice locations all around the Bay Area. Jump in any time and join your friends on the ice. Be a part of Bay Area high school hockey. Contact Sharks Ice for more details and get into the game today. Want to make $186,000 a year serving a community that wants you? The San Jose Police Department is hiring. Choose from over 50 specialty assignments like K-9 officer, helicopter pilot, or crime scene investigator. If you have the drive to serve, we will teach you the rest. Apply today at joinsjpd.com. Jerry Rice, touchdown 49ers. In my pursuit to greatness, I discovered the secret. Dedication to my team and my relentless drive to win. I chose to be in the presence of greatness. Bernardi Zarata, the official injury attorneys of the San Francisco 49ers, share the same dedication, the same drive, the same spirit of champion. When justice is your goal, choose the dedicated team of Bernardi Zarata, your faithful injury attorneys. Francis Lancer start this week as the number one softball team in the state and number two in the nation. The Lancers with a sparkling 13-0 record heading into a home-and-home -home series against league rival Mitty this week. The Monarchs are very strong again this season with an 11-1 record. Two great teams in our Crumble Cookies game of the week. Aubrey was there. Mitty and St. Francis, two of the best teams in the state, and they happen to be WCAL arch rivals. Now the Mitty Monarchs are led on the mound by sophomore Kylie Mace. She's 11 and one on the year with a .76 ERA, averaging better than a strikeout in inning. The St. Francis lineup is stacked. Sophomore Jamie Oakland is batting 590 on the year. Now these two teams split the WCAL title last season. Let's see who will get the edge up in our Crumble Cookies game of the week. Bottom of the first, leadoff hitter Mia Rodriguez slaps a blooping ball just over the shortstop for Mitty's first hit in the game. But Lancer starting pitcher Kate Munnerlin would get out of the inning unscathed, getting the strikeout to end the threat. A pitcher's duel early on, fifth frame, it's scoreless. Runner on first for Isabella Sandoval, a sack bunt. Lindsey Miller makes a great play at second, but Valerie Wong beats the throw. Lancers are cooking. Jamie Oakland comes up clutch, a base knock through the right side. Olivia Anderson throws the third, and Corey Hicks picks up the short hop and tags the runner for the out. Lancers score on the play to make it 1-0. Next batter is Munnerlin. And the pitcher takes this one for a ride. A three run, no doubter. Munnerlin helping out her own cause. It's four nothing Lancers. Top of the sixth, soft liner to left. Kira Bradley gets the awesome diving catch in left field. It remains a four run ball game. Top seven, here is Oakland. She had the go ahead RBI, and this is her third hit of the game. The defense just can't do anything about that. Jamie can fly, and two pitches later, she's on her way to second with her second stolen base of the game. Jamie is in scoring position for Munnerlin, and Kate picks up her fourth RBI. Have a date, Kate Munnerlin. Texas AM is getting a good one next year. Bottom of the seventh, Mitty still fighting as Lindsey Miller is able to chop this one through the infield. Miller pumping up her team, but that was only the second hit Munnerlin would allow all game, and it is followed by her 11th strikeout, which ends the game 6-0. St. Francis wins it, and here is our MVP, Kate Munnerlin. After three innings, like, we got a sense on the pitcher, so, you know, the, 
the third inning and the fourth inning, like, we knew, like, this is our time to shine. Like, we've seen her, we can hit her, we know we can hit her. This game's just something different playing against them, that it's, like, way more fun. Like, it's more competitive because we're playing good competition. It's fun. Off to Gilroy now as the Mustangs take on Willow Glen. The Rams get on the board right away. Maya Mendoza shoots it up the middle for a base hit. Here comes Catalina Medina and Catalina is safe at the plate. 1-0 Willow Glen. Alana Clancy was nearly untouchable in the circle. Alana getting one of her 10Ks on the day here. This one ends the first inning, but not to be outdone was Lele Yislava. Lele gets the batter to chase for strike three. Lele would finish with 11 strikeouts on the day. Bottom four now, and Bam Mendoza drives one to the deep left field. There it goes. See ya. A long home run for Mendoza, and this game is tied at one after four. Willow Glenn looking to retake the lead in the sixth, but Andrea Alvarez fires it to Jenny Hernandez, and the runner is out at second. Both teams end the sixth inning tied at one. The Rams break through in the seventh. Anaya Zambrano loops it to shallow left. That falls in as Haley Ackerman scores, and it's 2-1 Willow Glenn. Then with the bases loaded, Catalina Medina skies one to left. That's good enough to score Siana Miranda. The Rams get one more on a base hit to make it 4-1 Willow Glen. Alana Clincy shuts it down in the bottom half. Alana getting her 10th punch out of the game as Willow Glen rallies in the 7th inning to beat Gilroy 4-1 behind the dominant performance from Alana Clincy. The Bears from Menlo Atherton are having a great season so far. The team joining our Jake Vanderbrook at the Rikers Center this week to talk all about it. And we are here at the Rikers Center for human enhancement where goals are achieved. Got goals? And here's the Menlo Atherton baseball team. Make some noise! Oh yeah, we're riding with the Bears. So starting off with Jack Malise, who's hitting just over 380. So Jack, talk about, you know, a successful batting average that you got thus far. Just talk about your confidence level whenever you step into the batter's box. Um, yeah, I mean, I always think that I'm going to get a hit whenever I step up to the plate. And uh, I've been just trying to be aggressive early in counts, and that's what's been giving me all my success. So I'm going to continue to do that. Yeah, and you know who's also aggressive in the Bears box? This guy, Rowan Kelly. He's hitting over 400. He's got four dingers on the season. Leads the team with runs bad in. So, Rowan, uh, a couple of years ago, you committed to UC Santa Barbara. Just talk about what that uh, decision was and take me through that recruiting process. Yeah, I mean, it all happened pretty quick. Um, I'm still extremely happy with my decision. I just realized that, you know, Santa Barbara checked off all the boxes that, you know, I cared about. Great academics, great baseball team, great location. I just, I couldn't ask for a better place to spend the next four years. Oh, for sure. And finally, I'm going to make my way over to Ryder Kelly, who is uh, Rowan's brother. So, Ryder, just talk about what it's like uh, being out there playing with your big bro. I mean, it's pretty cool. I got to take everything for granted because we don't got much time left together. But uh, it's a lot of fun playing with him and seeing the way he plays and it has, has a big effect on me. It's pretty cool. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me. Now, take us out with a break. Bears on three, one, two, three. Bears! Stevens Creek Chevrolet brings us the Spirit Corner each week, honoring Spirit teams all around the Bay Area. Here is the cheer team from Christopher High School. Coming up, Mount Hamilton division action as Christopher battles Leland. But first, here is our U.S. Bank Top 10 Baseball Poll. Back to the Mount Hamilton division now, where two teams are chasing first place Lee. The Leland Chargers just one game back feature a hot-hitting junior, Brady Hernandez, hitting 500 with 25 hits this season. That means how, how many at-bats? I don't he's know. hitting five. You don't know. He's hitting 500. 500. He's got 25 hits. 50. Thank you. Okay, very much. I wasn't expecting to have to do math. There then. is there is no math in journalism. Christopher also started the week one game out of first place. The Cougars, Sam Gunther, with a 4.29 average. Christopher at Leland Friday afternoon. 
A nice crowd on a cool windy day in El Medin. This one was tight all the way. Christopher threatening in the first, but Leland starter Tygen Coffey gets the K to end the threat. The Chargers with two on in the second, but Christopher starter Cameron Boyd gets the K and we stay scoreless. Top three. And the Cougars with a runner on, but Leland catcher Dominic Poole jumps on this one out in front of the plate and a strike to first. Great play. The Chargers break through in the bottom of the third. Brady Hernandez with a rocket to center field. One of two doubles in the game for the hard-hitting junior. Brady scores on a fielder's choice. 1-0 Leland. The Cougars get two in the fourth. Aiden Simeon with a deep blast to right center field. All the way to the wall. A double for Simeon. Jesus Castro does his job sending it to the right side to score Semyon from third, and it's one all. The next pitch is wild, and that allows Mateo Alcantar to score, and Christopher has a 2-1 to one lead. But the Chargers answer back in the home half of the fourth. Sean Noonfell, sack fly to right, scores Caden Cantor, and we're tied at 2-all, and it stayed that way for a long time. Dominic Poole moved from catcher to pitcher and did a great job in relief for the Chargers. And then in the ninth inning, it's Poole sending everyone home with this monster blast to deep left center field. And it is gone. A walk-off home run for the outstanding senior catcher and pitcher as Leland sweeps the two-game series with a thrilling 3-2 win. Dominic Poole, the hero. Fenardi Zerata is your faithful injury attorneys, bringing us the hometown hero every week. This week we honor John Donahue from Lowell High School. John was a head coach for the Cardinals for 33 years before retiring in 2013. John setting the standard with a great program there. You can still see him supporting Cardinals at nearly every home game. And he also went with the team on the trip to Hawaii this week. John Donahue is this week's Fenardi Zerata hometown hero. DGDG.com wants you to be a happy car buyer, so each week they bring us the Be Happy Play. This is a play in a game that made everybody happy. This week's Be Happy Play goes to the Leland Chargers. Dominic Bull with a shot to left field. There it goes. A walk-off solo shot for Dominic in the bottom of the night, and the Chargers were happy about it. Want to be a happy car buyer? Go to DGDG.com. Coming up, it's the Service by Medallion Play of the Week. It might be this play, but you have to wait to find out. First, here is this week's training tip by our good friends at the Rikus Center. I'm Andrew Vili, and today's training tip is a Zercher squat. A Zercher squat is just a squat with the bar hanging in the nook of the elbow instead of up tall like a front squat. So Cole's going to just hold the bar there, squat down and up. This is a great alternative to a front squat where you have to get your elbows high, bend your wrists back, also lower risk of hurting your low back doing this way. Other things you could do is a split squat, same position, just up and down, and the load will feel different. It'll feel more on the forward leg than even, so just be mindful of that when you're choosing what kind of split squat you do. We announce the service by Medallion Play of the Week to end every show. Here are some great contenders and then the actual service by Medallion Play of the Week. Of the week. We start off with Washington's Joseph Guerra with an absolute dart to get the runner at the plate, but the play of the week goes to Livermore's Andy Pulaski with a diving stop, then throwing it to get the runner at the plate. One more time, Andy Pulaski! You just won the play of the week! That's the play of the week, and that's 49ers Cal High Sports for this week. Thanks for watching. I'm Robert Brunstein. And I'm Aubrey Tolliver. Be sure to join us next week for the story of the East Bay gymnast competing for the Belgian national team. We'll see you next week. I'm Robert Brownstein. And I'm Aubrey Tolliver. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and check back every Sunday night. And watch us every Sunday night at 6 and 10 p.m. on NBC Sports California. We'll see you at the games.